what's up YouTube today's video I'm gonna go over one of the events that happened back in Metamorph League that led to making some of the most insane items you've ever seen and items that simply today cannot be made anymore right so this is about how Awakener Orbs used to respect Metamod Crafty and what happened when the person who discovered the method or discovered how to do it introduced it on reddit now you might think that Reddit was super understanding of the method and how it worked, but in reality, most of the people on Reddit back then were pretty clueless about how crafting actually worked. They didn't really know what Metamods actually did. So it led to a lot of people calling out the original poster as a liar and market manipulator. But as you can see here, this is the hotfix that was actually made in Metamorph League. And it says, Awakeners orbs no longer... Uh, respects best master many master crafting meta mods, right? So, and it also says players have reported that the orb also transferred non influence mods between items, but we can't find evidence of this and it can't reproduce this behavior. So, this thing never actually happened. There was no actual non influence mods that got transferred. And this is the person sending what he found out to Chris, and Chris gave a pretty prompt reply saying, Thank you for the information. We will likely hotfix this today, right? So this was actually a pretty big bug or an overlooked aspect of the game. And yeah, so maybe this method, understanding it, will help you learn how to find ways to exploit the league mechanic early on or find ways to get an economic advantage early on, right? Because this is actually completely game-breaking back in the day. So first of all, we want to see what exactly is Awakener's Orb. And I know some people watching this video don't really know much about Awakener's Orb, so this can help you out a little bit. And this is actually the original item description of Awakener's Orb, right? It says, destroys an item, applying its influence to another of the same item class. The second item is reforged as a rare item with both influence types and new modifiers, right? So if you actually look at the Awakener's Orb and what it actually does, it's actually very, very confusing. So that's probably why most people didn't really figure out this method early on or what exactly Awakener's Orb even did. Well, that's if they could actually kill Cyrus because the fight was actually super bugged in the beginning. So this is a very vague description, right? So if I actually read this back in the day, I probably would have no idea what the Awakener's Orb actually did, right? So what Awakener's Orb actually does in layman terms is that you can take one mod, influence mod, from an item and apply it to another item and it will it combine the two influence mods and then re-roll every single other prefix and suffix right but it has to be two different influence items and it has to and it can choose one mod so ideally you want to have one influence mod on the first item and one influence mod on the second item so if you look at this this is the donor item as they call it and it has tailwind as the hunter mod and it's the only hunter mod on the item and then on this one it's a redeemer pair of boots and it is the only redeemer mod on this item. So when you combine these together, it will keep the two influence mods, right? So it'll keep the tailwind and it'll keep the onslaught. And it'll re-roll all of the other prefixes and suffixes. And sometimes you won't have a prefix or suffix, right? So right here, you can see that it made a new item and with random prefixes and suffixes. And I think it's actually missing a prefix, right? So that's how you actually use the Awakener's Orb. And people had no idea how this actually worked in the past. So if you're actually trying to Awakener's Orb craft nowadays, you need to make sure your original item and target item both only have one influence mod. I know a lot of people try to do this and they're wondering like what happened to their item and it's because there's another mod on there that is influence, right? And it can only guarantee it if they're the only influence mod on the item. See, right? Pretty complicated. And if you actually started back in Metamorph League and you saw this description, you have no idea what Awakener's Orb actually did, right? So how was the method actually discovered? Well, a lot of people actually did know how to craft back in the day, but crafting was kind of shrouded in secrecy, right? Like it wasn't really well spread. It wasn't really that much people posting information about Reddit. And it wasn't like YouTube back in the day as commonly as people just telling people how to make items and make mirror worthy items, right? Most of the crafters back then pretty much hid all of the knowledge because knowledge is pretty much power. As I said, people had no idea about the intricacies of the Awakener's Orb. So someone pretty much spoiled the surprise, right? I remember back in the day, I saw a bunch of these boots with life 
move speed, tailwind, and elusive. And it was all the same person selling it over and over again. And I knew something was wrong, right? I knew there, there was got to be some method out there to craft these items. And someone decided to be Robin Hood or Good Samaritan and pretty much tell the public how to do it, right? They made a post about how you can use metamods to guarantee prefixes and suffixes. And this actually resulted in people crafting a lot of crazy items with Triple T1 Fizz and Temple Mod. So if we look at these items here, how are these items actually made, right? So this guy pretty much found a Triple T1 Prefix Regalia. Now this still costs a lot of money to get the base. And then he had a Shaper Mod on it. So he found like a Shaper Ball Regalia with Triple T1. And it was originally Shaper Modded, he said. And then he crafted on uh, prefixes cannot be changed with the so he pretty much had all of these four top lines and he crafted on uh, prefixes cannot be changed and he found another random crusader chest to use the awakener's orb on and then he grabbed over the percent intelligence and then he combined it with this chest and then he got the triple t1 prefixes got saved and he was able to get both of the influence mods on here so he got the shaping influence mod of crit and the Crusader influence model percent int, and then he just crafted on this to get some crazy ES chest, right? Now this item over here looks pretty crazy, made it in the exact same way. So he has a life amulet originally, 87 life, and he said he had a T1 shaping quant, right? So he grabbed this over, and he crafted on prefixes cannot be changed again, he awakens orb, he found a Hunter mod with plus one in gems, which is what he wanted to get on the target amulet or the donor item or whatever you want to call it. So you awaken his orb together, an item with the Hunter mod plus one in skill gems onto this Onyx amulet with prefixes cannot be changed, quant, and 87 life. So that's how he's able to guarantee the percent quant and the plus one in gems and the T1 life. And this is just an absolutely insane crafting method back in the day especially without harvest or anything. So this was pretty much guaranteeing the ability to have like multiple mods or like perfect mods on an item, right? So he could theoretically have even gotten something better. Like say he got like a T1 wed roll or something like that or weapon elemental damage roll because he could have theoretically got the 89 life and then some other T1 roll on prefix and then quant and then the prefixes cannot be changed and he would have a near perfect amulet, right? On the prefixes, you have 87 life, plus one in gems, and plus one of the T1 prefix, and then also quant, right? And then he would have some random int and crafted mod in the end. So this was absolutely crazy method, right? So let's go over the explanation real fast in case you don't really understand how it worked. So this is pretty much an item with a good item with two prefixes you like. So right now this item doesn't have an influence mod on it. So what you have to do is you need to force an influence mod on it. So this guy wants a good item with two prefixes you like. Block a prefix with bench. So now he's going to use the influence item to add an influence on it. And he crafts it on the prefix so that the influence mod can't be a prefix, right? So pretty much he did this and then the prefixes cannot be changed. So he... If, uh, we'll use the Redeemer Exalted Orb and he got, I don't know what he got he actually, I think he got percent cast speed if you kill recently or burning damage or something like that. So now he's able, so this item is now Redeemer and then he wipes the suffixes by doing prefixes cannot be changed and then scouring it. So now he has his base with plus two all spell skill gems and plus two level of all chaos spell skill gems. So now this item can be used with the Awakener's Orb, right? So he chose an item of a different influence and he wants to keep this Malevolence Aura effect, right? So now he wants to Awaken or Orb, the item with the mod you want, viewing it onto the item you want to keep transferring the mod by locking the existing prefixes, which you also want to keep. So I'm actually not sure how exactly this worked out because this is kind of weird because the target item actually doesn't have an influence mod on it, if you see what this is. So this, I, this method is like kind of a little bit weird because he's able to keep both of these things and he doesn't actually have two influence mods on this. So I guess originally when this method and how it worked was that he only needed the original influence mod on the item, right? So he's able to just awaken his orb, this malevolence onto the double prefix. And yeah, that's how he ended up getting. So there's no actual redeemers mod on the staff, right? So it's pretty crazy. So now he has an item that's like 
triple prefix with perfect roles that he could just use meta mod crafting where prefixes cannot be changed and then pretty much just using uh, scours and exalts until he gets the prefix the suffixes that he wants right so this is how people used to craft before once they got the prefixes they would just meta mod craft it do prefixes cannot be changed and then exalt exalt and then like maybe annul or scour or something like that right so back then crafting was extremely extremely limited yeah, so I just looked it up and it seems like the cast speed if you killed recently is actually the Redeemer mod. I guess when you use Awakener's Orb, you technically do not need the items to have uh, what's it called, Influence mod. Unless you really want to keep it over. If you just want to make a base, then it doesn't really matter. And it doesn't actually need an Influence mod. The two items just need to be two Influence base types. So when this method was first posted on Reddit, right? People on Reddit were just saying the original poster was a liar. He was trying to market manipulate it by making people buy more Awakener's Orb or something like that. And then eventually people started trying out the method, the smart people who figured out how it worked. They were like, wow, this method is actually completely broken. And then people started posting video evidence of them doing the method and making crazy items. And this kind of started a craze to find all of the items and weapon types that would allow them to make these crazy items, right? So one of the craziest ones is utilizing the warlord hybrid to make a triple t1 prefix items so say you wanted to make a triple t1 prefix one which is pretty much almost impossible you would have people paying a bunch of money to try to get the temple mod to get the temple mod with flaring and then that would allow them to add a random influence mod and then awakener's orb over a warlord's mod or something like that or hunter's mod on the hybrid prefix or fizz prefix in order to get an insane amount of damage that would normally never be able to be done right so let's go see what that what those people actually did um crusader so you can see here crusader actually has this hybrid role 65 to 69 percent fizz damage and that's actually just crazy because you're able to get the temple mod and this one as long as you can find a wand with the temple mod and flaring right and for people wondering what exactly the temple mod actually is it's is there actually even shown on here but it's basically an incursion mod oh it's right here right so it's actually 169 percent. so it's pretty much tyrannical with gains 10 percent of physical damage as extra chaos damage which is just crazy so at that point it was pretty much a race to fight all of these weapons and once you got the prefixes done you could just meta mod craft the suffixes and you would have just these perfect items that are pretty much going to be unbeatable, right? And these items were appearing in the league super, super early on. I think this was only a week into the league. And you would have these perfect fizz items and perfect uh, weapons, rings, gloves, or whatever that you made that were going to be virtually unbeatable, right? So after GGG said that they were going to fix it, we had all these posts on Reddit saying that Everyone should just exploit early and exploit often because none of the people who actually did the method actually ended up getting banned. And then you had all of these posts about how the rich get richer. And it's definitely the case. Some of the people who found out about this method and kept their mouths shut probably made insane amount of exalts uh, doing this. They probably made around like hundreds of exalts a day, right? Because you could craft such GG items and no one was actually competing with you to find these bases to do this method on, right? And then this is someone who said, Jesus, I have only a medical doctorate. Slow down, but seriously, I don't understand 90% of the crafting methods being discussed here. And this is a pretty uh, average Reddit response when someone posted the method. So here are some uh, cool items that you can see that were actually ended up made that should never have ever existed, right? So this is the one I'm talking about. So you can see here that this is a Crusader Hunter one. So he actually grabbed over the Crusader mod. He found a Temples mod with the 100... 69% or 100 uh, tyrannical of gains 10% of fizz extra chaos damage and then he had flaring on it so he pretty much just crafted on prefixes cannot be changed and then he awakened his orb the crusader hybrid onto this uh hunter and butte wand that he made and then he's able to get triple t1 prefixes with a temple mod which is almost impossible to ever get you will never ever see someone make this item unless they won the lotto or something right and then at that point, it's pretty much just doing a lot of meta mod crafting to fix the suffixes up. And then it also allowed some of these bugged items to exist that should never really exist. So you had double double curse rings of Assassin's Mark and Elemental Weakness. 
just pretty much just did uh, suffixes cannot be changed. It had an open suffix and that allowed you to awaken this orb. Uh, another influence mod, curse suffix onto the item. Now this is actually one that most people don't really know about. And this is a gloves with 50% of fizz converted to coal. And this should never really exist because if you look at Craft of Exile for these items, they actually have the same grouping. Now for people who don't really know what grouping means, is that if you see these numbers on the right side on Craft of Exile, that means that can be the only number of that item on the on the gloves, right? So if you have the temple mod over here, and you have Fizz conversion as coal, let's go see where it is. Wait, this is not gloves, right? So let's go look at gloves here. And then you, this is actually a pretty important crafting method is that you can see how this thing has Fizz converted to coal damage. If you look at the group here, you highlight over it, you see how there's a bunch of other Fizz converted or conversions so that the item cannot have two of these. It can only have one of them. So the Awakener's Orb method allow you to bypass that. So that's how you were actually able to get 50% of Fizz converted to cold, right? So he has the Temple Cold mod and then he was able to Awakener's Orb. The, what's it called? I think it is Crusader, right? Awakener's Orb Crusader onto there. And then that meta mod would let you bypass the grouping, right? So that's how you get these bugged items. So these items are pretty much bugged, the ring and gloves. And this item is just something that's made that should be almost impossible because it guarantees you to add a hybrid roll onto a wand or a foil or whatever, right? So what can we actually conclude after looking at this is that crafting is pretty convoluted in the game, right? And you want to exploit early and exploit often, maybe not so much anymore because GGG actually bans nowadays. Now there's another story about League Stones. So I'm going to go over that in the next video. But that's why you should be wary about doing a lot of these exploits. This is not really an exploit, but more of like an overlooked crafting mechanic that GGG didn't really think about. And sometimes the mirror market can be completely screwed over for items, right? With a day or two of a game-breaking bug. So like say someone found out how to get a lot of AUG influences on Harvest. That could completely ruin like crafting a 12 link weapon if the AUG influences were super, super cheap. And people really had no idea about how to craft in the past. And that's definitely true until Harvest came out. People didn't really know about mod, about mod tags. And people don't really know about grouping and stuff like this. And weights on the suffixes. So Harvest was probably one of the most game-changing leagues in making the game much more accessible to people. Because back then, crafting was pretty much like a fraternity of hidden information, right? And lastly, the Wakener's Orb description is actually just terrible. Like, I don't really know why they make it so convoluted. I'm pretty sure that no one really had no any idea what the Wakener's Orb actually did. And it took a lot of trial and error to figure it out, right? So basically, I do think that a lot of new league mechanics are exploited with beasts. And meta mods, right? So you have the imprint beast and the split beast. There's a lot of people who split bases before in the past. There's people who even split uh, league stones or watch stones in the past or imprint them. So every single league, you should always think to yourself, what could I do with the league mechanic in relation to beast crafting and meta mod crafting, right? And you might find this new exploit or game breaking bug or whatever you want to call it and become the next POE trillionaire. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you find more mirrors, exhausts, and awakeners orb than me. And see you next time.